cuisine is very diverse. A variety of ingredients are cooked in different ways to reappear in dozens of delicious dishes. And anchoring all those creations are Korea's fermented foods, the root and foundation of Korean cuisine. This episode celebrates the feast created by Korea's iconic fermented foods, soy sauce, doenjang, cheonggukjang, gochujang, and kimchi. What are the secrets of Korean fermented food? This is where I work. I teach culinary arts with a special emphasis on fusion food, combining Korean and Western cuisines. I went on a trip to find out more about Korea's most well-known food, kimchi. There I saw how fresh Napa cabbages are turned into fermented food. Italian chef Paola de Maria met up with a soy sauce master. And James Howe saw firsthand the long aging process of Twinjang. It was an amazing procedure. Tim Alpha went to see a master of Cheonggukjang, another soy based fermented food. Through these trips, we were able to understand Korean people's unique sentiments and the diverse applications of chang. Now we're about to attend a dinner, marking the end of our journey. I'm Connie Didi, and with me are James Howe, Paula de Maria, Tim Alpa. At last, we're all here together. In no time, we're all busy sharing the stories of our trip. Our experiences and feelings can be summarized into several key words that express the secrets of Korean fermentation. How was your trip? I mean, where, where'd you end up going? Um, up north, yeah. kimchi country. <laughs> it was in Gyeonggi-do, uh, not so far away from Seoul, so uh, it, was, it was pretty interesting. Yeah. How about you, Paolo? Where did, where did you go? Uh... Uh, I was in Damyang, so deep south. Deep south. Yeah, and... We travelled all over the country to learn about the flavourful wisdom of Korean fermented foods. What have we learnt? Korea's signature fermented food Twenjang goes well with aged meat. Old kimchi and pickled vegetables are also fermented. The food on the table starts our discussion on fermentation. I'm curious uh, about fermented, you know, both of us, we had this kind of experience about fermented food, you know, Korean fermented food. Uh, which was your first uh, uh, impact with the fermented food? Well, we don't have fermented foods that much at home, so it's not something that I would go out and eat either. But since I've been here, I was amazed that the long time of the fermentation, my first thought was, it's got to go bad. Eating something two, three years old, sitting outside in a jar, that cannot be good. And it turns out it's, it's like a fine wine in a way. It ages and then seeing it and the taste, that was the, the most shocking mm -hmm. thing to me. The key to fermentation is aging. 
we visited an underground warehouse to see that process. Great tasting fermented food is achieved only when natural ingredients are processed by ancient yet scientific methods and given time to age at the right temperature. The flavors and textures of kimchi vary widely depending on the level of maturation. Then how is kimchi made? Kimchi is made by stuffing salted cabbage with all sorts of seasonings, salted shrimps and fish sauce. Once a year in late fall, Koreans make big batches of kimchi to last them throughout the winter, an event called kimjang. Now time takes over. As time passes, something mysterious takes place inside Tangdog a large clay jar considered Korea's natural refrigerator. Uh, and if you don't have a refrigerator, how are you going to preserve your food? One of the solutions is to ferment it. And if you're making something a year, a year beforehand, thinking about next year, uh, you know, this is a great way to deal with the food that you have. Probably kimchi was the one of the Korean food that I, I loved uh, and, and, and From the beginning. straight away. Oh. Yeah. So yes. when I go down to Jolado, yeah. if I go down, I go down like once a year or something like that, I will just buy buckets and buckets of kimchi and bring it back up. <laughs> well, yeah. it's, it's kind of I kind of actually like uh, the sour kimchi myself, you know, the aged kimchi. Well, it's got more depth to it. I don't know what you think about that, but I think it's got more depth. It's got more history behind it, you know. I love the sour tanginess of it. Yeah. It's like making um, kimchi jjigae. You can't make it with fresh kimchi. You have to make it with the most sour kimchi you can find in the refrigerator the most oldest one back in the corner. That's the one that tastes the best. The flavors of freshly made kimchi and aged kimchi differ greatly. The three-year-old kimchi is refreshingly tangy. It's used mostly in jjigae, the Korean stew. The hot and spicy soup flavored with tangy kimchi is perfect for perking up one's appetite. Aged kimchi is called mugunji. It effectively counterbalances the heaviness of meat. What about tuenjang, another indispensable part of Korean cuisine? The, uh, actually, the tuenjang uh, that kind of surprised me because um, it has little tiny microscopic holes that's not actually visible to the human eye. Wow. And what that does lets out the carbon dioxide and actually lets in fresh air. So it's almost like breathing like we are. Mm -hmm. So that, I, that's, that's what amazed me. Like kimchi, tenjang also goes through the aging process in changdok. We found this changdok very intriguing. This <laughs> Clay. The main material of Changdog is composed of irregularly shaped particles which create minute air pockets during firing. Changdog is dubbed the breathing container because impurities are emitted through these air pockets. It's used to make tuenjang too. The bean, smashing the beans to making the meju, hanging the meju, which takes a few months. And the process of just sticking the meju with the salt water and you wait up to one year. Yeah, it's a very long process. Salt and water are added when meju is fermented. Over time, meju turns into tuenjang. The tuenjang will actually float to the top and the soybeans will sink to the bottom. And you separate it. One will be tenjang, and then you will actually age, if I'm, not, if I'm, if I'm speaking correct. Yeah. You will strain the, uh, the liquid which is left over, which becomes the uh, soy sauce. From the tenjang, after one year fermentation, you make tenjang, and with the, with the sea salt, that one becomes kanjang. Yeah, the salt water. And the salt water. In a way, soy sauce is what is left over from making tenjang ferment again for at least one year and two years, three and either five years and, and you make is. different kind of kanjang.
This is gochujang, flavorful and appetizingly red. Spicy, sweet, salty and earthy, gochujang is Korea's quintessential hot sauce. Life in modern times passes rapidly. We are busy just living day after day, going faster and faster. Exhausted by the mindless daily routine, we long for slow food, our reward for waiting. Fermented food is the most well-known Korean slow food. And it is found in every Korean meal. When combined with fermented foods, natural ingredients get a flavor makeover. Anything with like the, the taste that you get from Korean fermented exactly. foods, we don't have anything that I could compare it to. It was very different for me in the U.S. I can't think of any fermented foods that we use as or eat as a as a mainstay as American food. I think sauerkraut maybe was the only thing I could think of as but a, that you know, doesn't and, even come. And right. I don't know anyone who made it at home mm. either. You know. You know, along those kind of uh, lines, some of them definitely a little aged, and the taste is always, it's always, I feel worth it, you know? Leave it in the fridge, that's what I'm thinking. Leave it in the fridge, it'll just get better. Kimchi gains depth as it ages. But the chef says he's going to make a slightly different dish with kimchi. He places kimchi on top of some cooked noodles. Then he garnishes it with a hard-boiled egg, sliced pear and julienne cucumber. The broth used for this noodle dish is the liquid from the aged kimchi, slightly frozen like slush.